was provided uh, to the auditors. I have it with me. The Control letter was... Controller budget, um, what's your take on this? 15 billion worth of voided transactions. And we've had this conversation. And sometimes this is done. They, they seek the approval, and your office does the approval. Then they go back and do their own things. And it's a way of stealing public funds. Thank you, sir. Could I say something, Chair? Yeah, Senator Young. Um, I know this is historical, but uh, my chair, I can tell you that is the reason why you remember the questions that we've been asking that Kisi County has got 672 voided transactions. It looks like this is something that has been set up for, and I would want the Auditor General to give us the reasons why they think this has happened. And number two, I really, really would want Chair the controller budget to come and answer those questions to us. Because is that there's something going on between Treasury, Central Bank, Controller Budgets Office, and finally to the county governments that are receiving the money through the executive. Controller budget? Um, at the control of budget, we only receive the su su successful uh, transactions in the exchequer requests. So the voided uh, transactions happen probably after. So those ones do not uh, make their way to the control of budget. However, we expect that the voided transactions are uh, authorized. Uh, they should be authorized. So maybe there, there must be an approval pro process at the county level. Avoiding the payments. Uh, could I ask a question, sir? Senator Yonka. Excuse me. How do you, I, I know, I've already heard what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. I also wanted the Auditor General to talk about it. How do you avoid payments for 15 billion shillings and then you pay through some other? This, this is what is. Can, yeah, I'm actually baffled. Could you try and explain to us what you've discovered? Thank you, Chair. Looking at uh, the, the voided transactions, some of the reasons is one, what they have explained, that a payment has been processed through the process up to IP. However, that approval for the final payment has not been granted either by COP to lack of funds. Again, a payment that we categorize under this are those payments where a payment is processed, however, wrong details can exist like a wrong name, a wrong account number, and therefore it pounces back. Thank so, you. Excuse me, Chair. So the three reasons you've given that are most likely supposed to be consequential out of this exercise in your simple common one hinges language what can you explain to me is actually happening to these transactions because number one you cannot pay something that doesn't have the account number that is proper isn't it number two if the payment has been authorized and the fund and the request the requisition for payment goes to the controller budget's office if the money isn't there, because you see, if Ms. doesn't ask you to file a requisition if there's no money. So the argument that the reason why this was actually being voided was because there was no money doesn't make sense. But I also know that if I took, like we have the case in Kisi County where the budget was mutilated, where the controller budget flagged out the budget which had been mutilated, which means the code that is supposed to be used for the payment of this money doesn't exist. I can see you are smiling. I'm with you now. Is that the true story? Yes. I'll see you are smiling. These things now, we know them. So begin to tell us exactly how we are losing money in our counties. We don't want you to play with us. Many of us are well-schooled. We are accountants. We are forensic experts. The whole of this team. And this has nothing to do with what is happening at the county, because this is like four years ago. The governor wasn't there. Can you tell us and tell Kenyans what exactly is happening when you have those four hypotheticals? Proceed. Chair, I may not have a, a case that I have 
approved. But in relation to the amounts that are on discussion here, the 15 billion is patching up of payments towards the end of the year with anticipation that the exchequer release, the exchequer money will come in. And though, so come the end of the financial year, that money is not forthcoming. But these transactions have been invoiced through the process. And therefore, for you to close the financial statements in the system, these transactions have to be cleared. And therefore, the way they clear them... That is one hypothetical. Give me the other three. That is the one everybody uses. Oh, it was exchequer releases, exchequer... No, 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 no. Give me. Why do you think somebody would actually stop payment of 15 billion shillings? Honorable Chair, can the finance experts from the county answer that? Because, yeah, I, because I, this is the system that they use on a day-to-day -to -day basis. I, I, I'm having a problem even with the county because you had said you, there was no documentary evidence provided to support authorization and reasons for invalidation. The county says it is attached. We, we, we can't see it. We can't see it. Why, uh, Governor, why did you choose not to provide that to the, to the Senate? Because I'd really like to see uh, that authorization to invalidate 15 billion or to void 15 billion worth of transactions. I'd really like to see that. Yes, I want to see who has authorized it, who requested and who authorized. Chair, in, your, uh, in your response, you have said the authority to void transactions has been provided. I'd really like to see that. Uh, yes, Chair, I can confirm that uh, this was provided to the auditors. I have a letter dated 3rd August uh, 2022 addressed to the Director of Miss Department National Treasury uh, requesting for void, voiding rights for officers working within the county treasury and five of them are listed with their PF numbers, their ID numbers and email addresses and the letter was signed by then Acting Head of County Treasury, Mr. Joseph Gadiaka. So and I, the response? That is a request? So normally in practice, um, Chairman, once uh, a letter is written, I've not seen uh, a response back from IFMIS indicating that the rights have been granted. Usually within the stipulated time of seven days, they issue the rights and once the officers access and the system... And seven days would have fallen on the date of election. They are, right. they are able to deal. What was happening on 3rd of August 2022? On the 8th. Chair, usually for clearing systems, again, based on experience. No, what, 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 what significant activity was, was happening, happening in, in the week of <laughs> the seven days from 3rd of August, those seven days that you expected to get uh, response? What was happening in the country? There was an election. Yes. yes. Yeah, but I, I cannot fully ascertain uh, the happenings then. But, uh, Why would one choose to void 15 billion worth of transactions on election week? Usually, Chair, the National Treasury grants uh, an extension once the financial year comes to a close. On, on 30th of June, not in August. Sometimes, uh, Chair, it runs up to at least a month or two after no, the no. That's a completely released. different matter. Mm. You are saying authority to void transactions has been provided, but you have described to us a request to void transactions. Correct. And that's why I'm saying I'm very curious to see who granted that authority and when it was granted. And, and meanwhile... on third, mm -hmm. so I'd like to see when it was granted. Thank you, Chair. And also, uh, Madam CEO, how I would have wished that you actually gave us the lists of the voided transactions and where the payments were supposed to be, were supposed to, and who was subsequently paid after that. Chair, as they do that, eh? I'll, I'll want the CEC to explain further. Um, you see, I understand, you know, with the kind of uh, even pending outstanding liabilities that are there, 100B, 
accountants will put things on internet banking, hoping that they can be paid. At the end of the financial year, everything that is not paid is voided. This financial year, the specific one that we're talking about, there was an extension from July towards the end because of the late exchequer release. So that is what came coincided with, uh, with August. Such that now if it has not gone through by the end of the financial year, Pole, you try again next year as a pending, as a pending. that's what actually happens in, in practice. So it's not that 15 billion was actually used to pay something else. I don't think there's a time the county has had 15 billion in its account in order at, at a go. But it's that, even now if you go to, uh, to, to internet banking, you'll find a lot of payments that are there just hoping that a decision is made to pay them. You know, you're talking about outstanding liabilities of close to 107 billion. You know, many, many of them are there. And they're just hoping that, you know, with this budget, I can get my pending bill paid or whatnot. So it's not that if you void, the money is actually then spent from CRF on something else. Because that, the auditors will be able to show that. And I can see Chair, that. Could, I, could I ask uh, His Excellency one question? Uh, what you're saying is that that's supposed to be a normalcy. Avoiding? Yes. It's a procedure. Yes, it's a oh, thank you. Why is the Auditor General raising that issue? Because, if it is a, because of the quantum. If it, hold on. No. He's not talking about the quantum. But he's here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is, like I've said, Governor Sakaja, it's like in Kisi. Why would somebody void 968 payments? What is wrong? In other words, I want them to tell me whether what you are saying, that everything is put on standby waiting for people for waiting to be paid. Is that the case? AOG. Uh, members, you, um, I do not want us to engage in speculation. What needs to be presented by the county is evidence on the authority to void transactions, which so far has not been proven. But uh, if we put but, together the coincidence, yeah. the coincidence of the dates and what was happening, yeah. even if it was year-end processes, National Treasury, do you allow them to go all the way to August? Well, <coughs> thank you, Chair. First, uh, Chair, allow me to say, with the request for, uh, for, for, for voiding, that one is proper. And um, Chair, uh, I've always been saying that payment in the accounting is continuous. And uh, to avoid this issue of uh, delayed exchequer, we usually advise county governments to continue processing up to IB level. So if at the end of the financial uh, period, then the exchequer has not been released, the only uh, best way to do it is to seek for approval to void. And Chair, on the question you have asked whether we allow, issues of voiding is uh, not standardized. It depends with the needs of a county government. So the county government can request for voiding even in August or even in July. It depends the need that has occasioned the county government to request for such a facility, which we give temporarily and close. When they make the request, do you, how do you action? Do you respond? Is there a user change request form that is filled? Because uh, that must be part of the controls. Uh, when they make the request and the request is approved, they are able to see it in their screen, the person with that right. I think the ready can... Uh, so why, 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 do you, why do you make them right when you do not commit anything on, on your part as National Treasury? Of course, the letter is, um, uh, is, 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 is uh, marked for action to a certain officer. And once that one is done, a communication is made through the IFMIS. If the person with the rights uh, check the screen, you will be able to see that the rights have been uh, given, and they can print that. Uh, you are, you are, there, I think the treasury is failing counties. Any change in access rights, ideally in a properly, uh, in, a, in, in a proper ICT governance environment, if you're going to change me from an ordinary user to a super user, there's always a change request form. And that happens even in small organizations. 
perhaps even in the office of the Auditor General. So if those persons whose names were on that letter, you, they wanted them to have higher rights than what, what they already have, ideally they're supposed to be a change management procedure or a change uh, request form. So I think on this matter, let's have a conversation to find out what the Treasury ought to do, the controls that need to be in the system, what the COB needs to do, and then uh, we can have a holistic proposal but uh, it does not take away the fact that this 15 billion, in terms of oil transactions, is, is a smoking gun. And we might want to ask people with greater capacity to find out whether those oil transactions uh, there are some, it was meant to, to defeat um, uh, the Office of the Control of Budget. But, yeah. but I think there, there's something the Treasury ought to do. There's something that needs to be put in the system, uh, but there's also... Uh, some duty of care on the part of the county. Chair, point of information, if you will allow me, sir. Senator. And it will take me to second. Chair, I've done a lot of research on this matter, and the information I've been given is that that voiding of transaction is deliberate. Normally, you will find the original budget would have been tampered with, so that when the payments are going to be made, the reason why anybody would void that transaction is because they want somebody else to be paid instead of who had been given the code number to be paid. Chair, can I make a request on behalf of the people of Nairobi? Because I can see time is uh, moving. And that there are very critical uh, items in this uh, report that I had hoped at least to hear from the county government. I have pointed out some of them. I just request that uh, you prioritize them in the interest of, of time so that at least there can be a conversation around projects as well. Okay, so then uh, le let's get out of this. Yeah, but uh, yeah. you know, you know you, you've really awakened my mind when you mentioned the date and what it was close to. Possibly it was being voided to defeat me, you know, in August 2022. <laughs> if the allusion is towards the election time. <laughs> you know, are you saying you are you are supposed to be paid from that money? That, that money that money went to uh, yeah no. but 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 i think i think the, the information you can get chair because i understand the argument and i can see this concurrence um also you know look at just uh, the statements uh, the bank statements in that period about the amount of money paid out uh, from the county you know you can be able to get that you can provide that uh, so on cbk and, and you'll see you know, you know, you know one thing, for instance, Chair, that I'd like to just bring to your attention. Every year, on top of voiding this, there's supposed to be refreshing of IFMIS users. But the old users on IFMIS are removed, and then new ones are assigned. I found 2,000 users on IFMIS, Chair. 2,000. 2,000 what? 2,400 IFMIS users. For Nairobi County. Yes, even dead people. Even dead, dead people who've moved. And so I removed all of them. Just this last financial year, so that every sector can have the specific number required with the different stages. But you can imagine 2,400 users. And that time, you remember, procurement was also manual. So procurement is manual. You have all these users hanging around in cyber saying, what are you doing? Uh, payment, you know. That is why I left this Senate to go to become governor of Nairobi, to sort out these things. Because that was the situation. You cannot have all those users. Somebody can create a procurement process from scratch at River Road. Get an LPO, you create, you create uh, even things that are not even on budget until the delivery note is done. Today, we're in on e-procurement. Everything from the beginning to the end has to go through that process. And if there must be an exemption, in situations where you need to do it manually, it must be approved in cabinet. Uh, Governor, let's leave it there. We, I think we've got a live matter that uh, the ESCC, and I think it's in court, must have been in Kilifi, where the persons with rights to the system created transactions and made payments in the middle of the night because of unfettered rights in, uh, in the system. So there must be a conversation around that using the Kilifi case as an example and the Nairobi case. So I, I think members will, will, will have to deliberate on this and maybe come up with some proactive uh, 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 um, recommendations. The next one is irregularities but, in procurement of transferred services. Yes, yeah, so that is not close to new. On that one, there's a question that Treasury must answer. 
because automatically they should remove these users. What was happening with Nairobi? No, we, 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 come to that. we agree with you. Right. Uh, and that's why I said there's something for CFB to do, something for Treasury to do, uh, and something for the county to do. The next issue is irregularities in procurement of transferred services. And I think the key question the Auditor General is asking is that while health was transferred, the county still made an award for supply of drugs for 75 million to two companies, but the supporting documents have not been provided. Governor, your response on record does not answer the query by the Auditor General. You are saying it was a pending bill to KEMSA incurred by Nairobi City County. Give us the details of what was supplied. Give us the details of the invoices. Give us the details of the payment vouchers. Otherwise, we will say that this money of 75.9 million was stolen. CFO. Um, Chairman, we tried uh, sourcing for support documentation uh, on the payments uh, cited by the auditors, but we could not, uh, these documentations were not availed to us, and therefore we will leave this matter to the committee for further guidance. So this looks like theft of 75.9 million under the guise of uh, medical supplies and we shall be asking the ESCC to be with us on this so that this money is recovered. Uh, Dr. Munyo? Allow me to explain this. Eh? It is not upon the committee to declare a loss. A financial loss is supposed to be declared by the user department, the, the county government in this case, so that uh, they, they are themselves who are supposed to initiate recovery of that money and a declaration of loss so that if they cannot be able to recover the cost entirely, PFM is very clear. They should look for the person who occasioned it through the, uh, the, the security agencies. I agree with you, Dr. Tari. We shall direct the county executive to take measures to recover the lost funds. I think that's how we should uh, frame it. It is a county executive to take measures for recovery. The same way we said for the NHIF uh, insurance payment. It is upon them to initiate. Uh, I think um, I, I don't want us to go into the, the next issue is uh, misallocation of expenditure and reconciled bank balances um, outstanding interest, account payables, deposits and retentions. May I ask Governor whether whether the signatory to these financial statements, um, Martha Wambugo, is still in the county executive? Yes, uh, yes Chair. Is Martha present? No, not only is she still in the executive, she's right behind me. Martha Wambugo, you are a, a member of ISPAC. Just give her the microphone. Yes, Chair. I'm a member of ISPAC. Uh, for how many years have your financial statements attracted an adverse opinion? Mm, for the last, uh, since the county government started. Have you been signing the financial statements during that duration? Uh, for a period of two years. For the three years, what has been your score? Um, adverse and disclaimer. So, would you sit proudly before the Senate with that kind of uh, uh, with that kind of verdict? Uh, no, no, Chairman. We are not proud of that, but we are working towards getting a favorable opinion from our you auditors. You have a professional responsibility. Yes, A professional Chair. responsibility that is personal. It is not about who was governor then. It is not about who was CC then. You as a member of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants, member number 5435, you have signed financial statements for three consecutive financial years which have either been disclaimed or been rendered to be adverse. Why do you think you should be trusted to manage public resources? Oh, thank you, Chair. As a member of the Institute and with my team members, we've been doing our best to provide financial statements as required. 
but uh, given the, the circumstances, some of the issues have not been supported, so uh, the auditors have come up with that opinion due to unsupported transactions. But uh, in the preparation of the accounts, we have done our best. When so. you sign off with the financial statements and you have numbers in that financial statement, yeah. where do the numbers come from? Aren't they supposed to come from supporting schedules and payment details? Thank you, Chair. They do. They come from IFMIS. They come from the sectors. But at the point the auditor comes to verify these things, some of these things are not provided by the sectors. That is the main problem. So why Chair. would you report something that is not supported? Uh, we report as per the transactions recorded in our books, in our IFMIS uh, system. But the actual documentation sometimes to support these transactions is not availed to the auditors. Whose responsibility is it to avail them? It is the responsibility of finance and county treasury to avail them from the sectors. So the uh, sector accountants and the chief officers of the sectors, we, we are tasked with compiling the reports. So we, we require the sectors to support us, to give us the documentation. Why are you required to sign these financial statements? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, as a member of the institute, as a qualified accountant, that is why I sign these, these financial statements and, and also as a holder of that mean? office. What does your signature mean on these financial statements? Yes, yes, Chair. So I, want to, I want you to say it. What does your signature mean? We take responsibility. So you can't tell for us about sector accountants. Statements. You can't tell us about other people. It is you as a professional who must take responsibility. And if you do not agree with the numbers they are giving you, you do not sign. Because as a professional, you cannot sign something that is not accurate. Why should we not refer you to the Institute for Disciplinary Action alongside the others who have gotten adverse opinions? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Um, as I said before, as a sector, as the uh, finance sector and the county treasury, we compile the figures from sectors, from the state, from the IFMIS, from the IFMIS and our vote books. Then we demand the supporting schedules from the sectors, and the best we get is what we prepare for the auditors to look at. You are accounting like IBC, yeah. where Chebukati signs things at Bomas. Then he says, go and blame the returning officer in the county. That's a sham we have seen in our elections. We cannot accept that from professionals. Can I ask, uh, uh, Chair, uh, you spoke of circumstances. If, mm. if, what, which, which years were you, which years have you signed? Uh, 2021 and 2022. What circumstances were prevailing at that time that would... Uh, make you sign uh, documents that would put you in problems with my chair? Uh, when we prepare these financial statements, chair, we, we prepare them with the best information we have received from sectors. As county treasury, we compile the statements from all sectors. So if every, every department brings you documents that you yes. can clearly see uh, forgeries, they don't make sense, what is your responsibility as a person who signs up on those accounts? Thank you, Chair. Uh, our, our responsibility is to confirm the information we get from sectors. And what we have confirmed is what we put on the financial statements. So everything there you have confirmed? From the sectors, yes. It sounded like Chabukati. Excuse me, Chair. I can actually see his face, Chair. <laughs> yeah. Chair, Sir. for, for me... Uh, <coughs> This, this is what is wrong with our systems. This is, wrong. This, this is the reason why devolution is dying. You ain't brave enough not to do your job. You ain't brave enough to stand up to the stealing that goes on. All right? The governor was not there. You guys were the custodians. Sasa umebeba mkia. That is where we are. And we are not going to fall back on these issues. Because you can't bring documents here, which mean nothing to us. And then you assume all of us are dunderheads. We know nothing. We see nothing. Who are you protecting? 
This is where we are. We are really feeling frustrated. And yet you look like you know what you're doing. You, you sound like you're well schooled. Imagine, I just feel like you, you threw away the water with the baby. Um, Senator Chirarke. The baby, uh, Auditor General, you have finished 22-23. Uh, How does it look like? Through the chair? 22-23? Well, what was your opinion? Chair, the opinion is at us. Again. And again, uh, uh, it's uh, the gracious lady who signed the financial statements? No, Chair. Uh, who signed this time round? Uh, Governor, you may want to tell us who signed the financial statements for 2022 23? Uh, Joseph Gadiaka. We are going to crack very hard on professionals who have the responsibility of doing the right thing and they do they don't do the right thing and they assume it's business as usual yeah, you have yeah, seen yeah. what has happened in your county assembly and we are seeing the same kind of uh, uh, situation in the county executive and again governor he does not have to take the senate to uh, talk to your staff i mean you should shield them by making sure that you take administrative action or training so that when you come here, you are telling us, you know, we had some problems, but I've already asked the Treasury to train my people. And so there's going to be an improvement. Chair, but we are not going to allow them to hide behind the governors. If you've got a professional responsibility, accounting, HR, procurement, we shall come for you directly through your professional body. Can I? Chair, uh, there's not finished. Uh, maybe before the governor speaks, uh, Madam Mother Wambugu, you are aware if this was a private sector, these are f to have formed the ground for your sucking or firing from the entity. Are you aware when you get adverse? I think it's only in public sector where you are rewarded. Are you aware of the implication of adverse opinion? I am, Senator. Yeah? I am aware, Senator. Okay. Chair. Governor, what, yeah, what, what, what are you doing, uh, you know, internally? You, you, you've had disclaimers since the onset of devolution, and then it has gone to adverse opinions, and your first year in office, it's still an adverse opinion. What are you doing? What, yeah. What's the conversation on capacity? Chair, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Chair, this is why I am the governor of Nairobi now. From 2013 to 2018, 13, 14 financial year, 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, and 18, 19, Nairobi County got disclaimer, opinion. Yeah? But, you know, it was just terrible, <clears throat> completely. And you remember this is coming from the, the council, then the first county government. So 13, 14 to 18, 19 was disclaimer. From 1920 up until now, it has been adverse. The things were, and that is why we took the bull by the horns to go for this position, you know, to say, okay, look, what is the systemic problem? For you to have an adverse opinion, there are many things that are carried forward over the years. The story on pending bills will always be in every audit report. You know, there are things that are, are, are carried along that you need to find closure with the, with the Office of the Auditor General for it to move. In fact, it is in this time that Nairobi has gotten its first ever qualified opinion on anything. That is the liquor. Uh, the alcoholic drinks, uh, the liquor board. The report for 2023 is qualified. Chair, those are the improvements that we are making in the city. You can't imagine that we'd have come in after six years of disclaimer and then adverse that I would just come and wave a magic wand and suddenly it becomes qualified. The improvements we're making, for instance, I've told you about the if misusers that we are that we were having. I've told you about e-procurement. You know, uh, the, the 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 using the revenue. Um, um, reporting modules that are on uh, IFMIS, modules that have never been used. If you have time, we can take you through exactly what we are doing to improve, to make sure now the next financial year becomes becomes better. Of course, the first one, when you get in, you find it's the same people doing the same things, carrying on the same issues. Those changes are made as you, as you progress. The chief officer, for instance, became chief officer in February of 2002-2003 financial year. 
You know, there was a chief officer before that. There was an entire structure before that. We've been doing trainings. We are talking to these professionals. We are, we are, we are paying for them the, prof the continuous professional uh, development. So I think in a matter of time, you know, because it is, it, it is one thing to really want it to change immediately, but the practicality of it, the magnitude of issues that we deal with in the county, you know, and, and I would even allow my chief officer uh, to, to speak about some of the improvements we're making. It takes more than 19 months, uh, Chair. Um, and, and I'm sure even the next audit will start looking better. If we already moved qualified, by the time we're done, we will have an unqualified report, Chair, possibly even in the next two financial years. I'm the one who pr proposed, Chair, uh, something that also the Auto General took up, yeah? The reporting matrix on uh, implementation of audit requirements. And they took it up and said, look, this is a template that they want to actually have counties developing. Because the reason for audit is to improve systems. The reason for audit is to see where there are loopholes that could be used uh, by those with you know, bad intentions and how you close those audits, whether it's a system audit, the financial audit. And that is why I said that matrix for implementation of audit proposals needs to be filled in internally by ourselves. Before I came in, chair, even the internal audit committee was not there. I was able to constitute it. I was able to resource the Office of, the, of Internal Audit. They, they, they were not being listened to. In fact, many of them, when they came to my office, they said, it is their first time to enter that office. These are people who've been there from the time they were mayors. They've been there. They've never seen the office of a mayor or a governor. But the people I'm working with every single day. So it's a process. I, I, I can see the progress. It might take a while to catch up in terms of the, the reporting. But the Office of the Auditor General can confirm to you that there are serious improvements in a lot of these issues. And maybe that's why many people in different quarters are not happy. When you remove all those users, when you remove the people of Hewa who are used to getting 150 million or some of these payments, we're saying are clearly unsupported to facilities we clearly don't know, they will not be happy with that chair. But we must do the right thing. And that's my team knows, and the professionals, yes. that I'm not carrying anyone's cross. Everyone will carry their own cross. Thank you. Your professional responsibility. Don't think that because the governor can explain his issues that you hide behind him. The other day I was, I think, at Osotsi's committee when we were looking at this uh, uh, report on uh, alcoholic drinks licensing. And I said, look, even if it means calling whoever was there then, who was protecting someone at that time, they must answer to it. And I've told them you should never be told to do the wrong thing by anyone, even invoking the name of the governor. So that, that, that progress, you know, if we, were to look, if we were to get a session to look at implementation of audit uh, proposals, how do you close an issue? An issue is unresolved. You've said, yes, it's unresolved. I've agreed it's unresolved. How do we close that issue? How do we, you know, uh, bring closure to it so that we improve that system? You know, that is what then okay, benefits let me stop you there, and helps a, a county chair. The, with this committee, we are naturally cynical because you have seen a lot of theft. And so sometimes unless it is proven that it is not uh, deliberate, we take a view that people are out to fleece the county governments. And professionals must take that responsibility. Now, I think, looking at the time, we had said that um, issues to do with uh, legal pending bills, issues to do with 11 billion to NMS, we will have to call for a separate sitting. Um, there could be a few issues here where we'll take the written responses, but there's, there are some two projects here. I think let's go to the project on um, the project. Excuse me, Chair. 12 point. I believe uh, under the standing orders, we are past five o'clock. Uh, the house rises at 6.30. Okay. So okay. we are still within time. Thank you. So let's go to delay in installation and commissioning of machines. Vice Chair, you, you, yeah, let's, let's look at these two projects, the printing press and the weights and measures equipment at uh, Marikiti. Printing press, Auditor General, what was the observation? I think this needs to be read out. It is on page 20 of the of your audit report. I think that is under English chair. under lawfulness. Under the report on lawfulness. Issue number 11. 
delay in installation and commissioning of machines, printing press, Review of records provided revealed that the county procured four state-of-the-art printing press machines at a cost of Kenya shillings 51,297,261 in the financial year 2016-2017. Fiscal verification carried out revealed that although the machines were delivered, three of the machines Perfect Finder, Kenya Shillings, 10,025,743. Offset Printing Machine, Kenya Shillings, 14,410,000. And Galtine Machine, Kenya Shillings, 7,575,286 had not been installed five, five years after their procurement. Management's explanation was that the machine's height was more than the height of the ceiling of offices in Nairobi City Hall. And as a result, they could not fit, putting into question if feasibility study and user requisition and specification had been carried out before initiation of the purchase. Thank you, Chair. Governor, may you read your response? Well, Chair, my response is as uh, presented in uh, the document. Just read it, just read it, because the Auditor General also read it, read their finding. Uh, I'll ask the CC Finance to read that response. I'll explain. Yeah, space for installation of the three machines was identified as the basement of main city hall. The three machines are, as uh, had been pointed out, uh, just, just read machine. Written, uh, your management response first. The three machines are offset printing machine, guillotine cutting machine, and the perfect binding machine. The requisition uh, was done and forwarded to the procurement for award. Advertisement for award was done on the 18th of March 2024, and no one met the requirements. Advertisement of the same was done on 8th April and closes on 14th April 2024. What, what was the requisition that was done? What was it for? Uh, let me ask for assistance from the director of uh, procurement so that we know what the procurement was. What requisition are we talking about here? You bought materials in 2016, a printing press in 2016. It has not been implemented. There is no value for money. So... I thought that's what you are going to be responding to. Chair, the machines were bought, um, but the place where they were to be installed was not sufficient for the machines. So they were looking for a place where the installation could be done, so what, which has not what, been done up to date. What, is the, what was the basement of Main City all uh, supposed to do? What are you supposed to be doing at the basement? Oh, the basement, is the, 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 the machines could not fit at the basement. At the basement? Yes, sir, sir. Now, a requisition was done and forwarded to the procurement for a what? What requisition? For what? For a word of what? What are you looking for? You are looking for another city hall? Or what are you looking for? No, I'm not privy to the requisition, Chair. Governor, this is your management response that you have tabled. It is not making let me sense. Ask, let me help them. Uh, let me help them. Chair, yeah, it is. Um, first of all, I doubt the machines are still state of the art. You know, this is the problem I'm telling you we're dealing with. When you find something procured in 15, 16, 16 17. Uh, Governor. And has not been used. Governor. I'm, I'm explaining no, what. No, order, order, let me guide you. Because yeah. of time and because of the mood of the house, just tell us. The procurement is for retrofitting part of the basement to be a printing room. Because the issue is the height. You'd have to demolish, uh, almost break columns at the current printing room for these machines to fit. And so a section of the basement, because the height allows there, is now being you know, retrofitted to actually accommodate the machines and to have them used. So that's a requisition you're talking about? That is a requisition. Because though, yeah. this does not tell the story. Yeah. What is the, should have given what is, details. What, what, is the, what in your procurement plan... How much is that supposed to cost? I don't have that uh, information here with me, Chair, uh, but you can check. No, by the time you advertise the award, then it means there was a procurement plan. Yes. 
So what, what, what is the amount? What was the provision? Head of supply chain? And Chair, you know, this is a very recent matter. It was closed on the 14th of April, just uh, two weeks ago. Yes, yes, yes. Chair, the QS was to look for for the funds and the drawings before installation. Oh, so we advertisement was done on 18th of March. Can you do advertisement before you have done the 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 actually, without a procurement plan? Actually, Chair, it is criminal to. I'll confirm, Chair. I'll confirm, Chair, because it was given, but I don't have the information. Are you the now. head of supply chain? I'm the head of supply chain. Sir. Are you a member of the institute? I'm sir, the of member of. Chain. Managers. Yes, chair. So, so the the same concern about professional responsibility that we put to the member of ISPAC applies to you. Are you aware of the management response that is before the Senate? No, chair. Now, Governor, why did you call troops who don't even know which direction to shoot? Oh, the, 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 shooting you in the back. And chair. chair. I think the, the, the last, uh, is it the last line of the paragraph on the audit query is very clear. Because uh, the question is feasibility study and user requisition. And the specification had, was not carried out before initiation of the purchase. What they should have done is to provide that information, according to me. I don't know. Yeah? yeah. And again, just to give us what has been bought, you know, so that we are sure those things were bought. We don't even know whether those things are bought or not, or rather delivered. We are, we are dealing with Chair. 51 million Kenya shillings, so Chair. it's not pocket change. <laughs> Chair, I think, the I think this, for me, there. this for me should be one of the most embarrassing things I've ever had. You know you live in a bed sitter and you go and buy a 6 by 6 exactly. bed. Mm -hmm. Then uh, when you get to the door, uh, the Machine bed cannot fit. And then and then you advertise a tender to demolish one of the walls so that the bed can fit. Maybe I think funa, it is very embarrassing. This is terrible. Your man it's on a terrible. Six by six. And, and, and governor, yeah, that is why, I, I, that is why I invite to be governor, to sort out such things. Yes, but you're, this you're, was but the you're not sorted. Seven it's, seven. it's still a problem. Chair, if it's you even getting worse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. so, <laughs> your, your officer back there, governor, is, is actually adding insult to injury. That you can get into advertisement of a tender before you have a budget and you know how much money it is. No. He cannot in, be in charge of supply chain, man, supply chain management. And he doesn't know this is something that uh, has closed on uh, 14th of April is when? Possibly it is look at, at the specific procurement. Yes, and there's, the a, reason, is, is there's a reason why we're asking order, that. Order, order, governor. Allow the senator to... There's a reason it. why we're asking that. You will find even more absurdity when you realize the project... Uh, the, the, the cost of demolishing City Hall to fit these machines is twice the amount of the machines, the value of the machines. That's why we ask these questions. It might even bring City Hall down. Is that, is that a statement of fact? <laughs> I said you might find. No, In no, the absence the, of, uh, of, of that document from the, your director there, we don't know how much money it is. It's, you know, if you give him time, he can actually just get it from the procurement officer in that sector. Procurement is decentralized to the sectors. What I know is that it's, a, it's around 2.5 million uh, shillings. Uh, that we're talking who, who signed about this management creates. response, uh, uh, Governor? I can see the signature of Asha Abdi. Yes. Is yes, Asha yes. Abdi in the room? Yes, Chair. Um, present. So, Asha Abdi, are you the one, are you responsible for this management response? Uh, <coughs> yes, I of, have submitted. Of course, of course, it is a Governor's response, but you're the one who put it together. Yes. What, are you, tr what are you telling us here? Uh, Chair, maybe I can just shed light on this. Um, Procurement is currently decentralized at the county. Requisitions are done by the sectors. We have fully implemented e-procurement uh, end-to-end, and therefore the user department actually carries that function uh, from the point of requisition to contract management. So could be that's why the director... Yes, there is decentralization, but yes. where, 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 what's the point of convergence as far as the PFM is concerned? The director supply chain management... Yes, so you cannot run away from... Uh, that responsibility. Where you delegate uh, duties, uh, responsibility still remains accountability and is it accountability or responsibility? Both. Remains at the center. Yeah. So, so, so tell us, you have spent 51 million, 
to buy a printing press in 2016-2017. Perhaps some of you are not in the county government. What are you doing to make this thing work? So if I can answer the question, uh, one, we do not do any advertisement unless there's a budget provision for it, simply because if you're doing e-procurement, then there's no way you can advertise for a project without a budget. So the budget for this project is actually 2.5 million. It is at uh, initial stages of procurement. Uh, advertisement was actually done on 8th of April and closed on 14th April. It is yet, we are yet to close on this tender, but at least the procurement process has started to ensure that uh, these machines are actually put to use because the services are required by the county. What was the intended uh, objective of this? Of this machine. Of this machine. The printing machines? Yes. Uh, so, Chair, if I can... Sorry, oh. yeah, just, just explain. The amount of money spent... Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah because it's a value-for-money question. Actually, it's yeah. a value-for-money question. Mm. And uh, I believe the thought uh, behind this was to ensure that the county minimizes its current expenditure on printing. Uh, from experience, every sector was actually outsourcing for printing services and spending quite colossal amounts of money uh, to suppliers, while these services could easily have been provided in-house. So that is the reason behind... I have an indication of how much we printers. spend every year on printing services. I don't have that information uh, at the moment, but we can have it availed, uh, Senator C. Why must it be only at the basement and not in any of your other county government facilities? Currently, yeah, there is availability of space um, at the city hall basement. Chair, chair the governor. No, but you have to spend millions <laughs> to make it ready. <laughs> the governor has hosted us in some of the rooms at uh, city hall. They have very high ceilings. I don't know why we we need we need to demolish basements. So and push that machine being into one of those, the two point five million is to create, you know, to create space for it, you know, um, at the basement. But I know no, the printing no, but, request. Yeah, but the the yeah, printing yeah. needs. Uh, those sorry, no, no. no, no. I, I think I, I think I want us to, Governor, please crack the whip on your team. This thing you have inherited a skunk, but you are still carrying it around. You need to get rid of it because. 51 million in 2016, obsolescence. Whatever, if it's technology, if it had movable parts, if there's been no service, if it's not been used for that duration, you will uh, go and uh, repurpose uh, your bed sitter, then you find that the thing is not working. Yes, Chair, you can imagine an entire term of office of somebody and the NMS and everything in between didn't even use these machines. This is from 16, 17. So 17, 18, 18, 19, these are, you know, 51 million of Kenyans' uh, money, yet people are still printing things. In fact, you must check if there are printers who are connected to people <laughs> who, you know, get that, that contract to mm. keep printing and make the machine deliberately not work, you know. So what we're coming to do is to say, okay, look, we have these machines, can we make them work? Chair, when I got in our, our, our data center, for instance, had not been utilized, it was not being utilized. World Bank spent so much money in making us have a proper data center. Now that we've, uh, you know, activated it and put, you know, all whatever we need to use it for, is only realizing these machines brought to us during Kidero's time are now getting obsolete. They have been quiet. In fact, my discussion with World Bank is like, look, you, you, uh, you put money in this project for us to use technology. For the last five years, it has not been activated kindly, extend for, to me fresh machines. There's a Nairobi addressing system, physical planning, you know, the addressing and street naming system. For five years, it had been so in a room that was locked. And then we went and opened up that room. We were, we are the second city in Africa to have a physical addressing system. But for five years, in fact, the guys who did it here, we were the first. Because it was not being implemented. They went to implement it in Kigali, in uh, Rwanda. So, Chair, these are things I found. And I am, you know, we can say what I inherited. I will not call it a skunk. But there was a problem from leadership to inspiration because the same same people have been able to improve on many things. Chair, in the first financial year we got into office, of course you know the election was in August, September, whatnot. I was able with the same people to raise the highest revenue in five years. With the same same people. This financial year, which is the second one, 
as of today, I've already surpassed that record. And okay, I let's, two let, let's not so, go there. We have yeah. said uh, revenue will have a separate conversation. Yeah. Let's go to Ukulima Market. Is that Marikiti? Weights and measures equipment at uh, Ukulima Market. Auditor General, what's the issue here? Chair. <coughs> well, the the Lady the entire. Yeah. Yes. So during the year under review, management paid an amount of Kenya shillings. <laughs> 17 million 206,000 in respect to supply installation and commissioning of weights and measures equipment at the Ukulima market. The installation works commenced on that first May 2019 for a period of three months. The scope of works included founda foundation civil works, costing, costing, weight office building works, supply of weight bridge deck and sensors, CCTV system, setup costing, equipment installation and calibration, four dormant platforms, and 10 electronic counter scales. Fiscal inspection of the markets carried out in the month of November 2022 revealed that machines with a cost of Kenya shearing 7 million, 696,000, comprising of equipment installation and calibration, four dormant platforms, and 10 electronic counter scales had not been installed. Further, it was observed that the partial machines which have been installed did not have enough space for vehicle to negotiate corners, since the entry point to the market was occupied by a private developer. Further, the market has been put the market has never been put into use and this exposed the already completed works to vandalism and deterioration. In addition, whereas the works had been supervised by Nairobi Metropolitan Services, the payment for the works was made by the Nairobi City County Executive. No evidence was provided to confirm that NMS had authorized the county to pay. In the circumstance, it was not possible to confirm value for money of expenditure totaling to Kenya shillings, 17 million 206,000. Thank you, Chair. What's the county's response? Thank you, Chair. Uh, contract for supply, delivery, installation, and commissioning of weights and measures equipment was awarded to Gokan Technical Services Limited. Uh, in the month of October 2016 with a price schedule. The installation works commenced on 31st May 2019 for a period of three months, and the scope included foundation civil works, way office building works, supply of way bridge decks and sensors, CCTV system setup and equipment installation and calibration. These works were indeed supervised by engineers from the then NMS, as evidenced by Annex 1 attached on appointment of resident engineer by the Director, Public Works and Transport, supply of four dormant plat platforms and 10 electronic counter skills were done through the delivery note by the contractor to the county general stores on the 27th July 2018, Annex 2 attached. A recent visit to the general stores confirmed the existence of the said equipment at the stores the dormant platforms and electronic counter scales were to be utilized at Kangundo Road Wholesale Market, which was later converted into a retail market. Upon completion of the works, the Director of Public Works and Transport informed the CCO trade to appoint an inspection and acceptance team, which was then constituted and issued a certificate as documented in Annex 3. The contractor had no mandate to get rid of the developer blocking access to the web bridge, the only access being one way to and from the platform. Would you just expand on your last uh, sentence? Chair, the last sentence, uh, the last paragraph, sorry, uh, basically just highlights appointment of uh, an inspection and acceptance team to ensure that uh, those supplies were actually delivered at the The last course. sentence.
the last sentence on the is on the contractor blocking the road. Blocking? Blocking the entrance. Well, what, yeah, just explain that. I'm trying to make sense of it. And governor knows who taught me English. Uh, must have been the same person who taught him English. Yes. <laughs> TFO, what's what's that? What's that statement about? Uh, maybe I can try and assist uh, chairman. This equipment, although uh, we are talking about uh, Wakulima Market, I hope, this, uh, dormant, I, I hope you are restricting yourself to the last uh, yes. uh, sentence. Yes. Okay. So this dormant platform, uh, a decision had been made to move it to the Kangundo Road wholesale market. That's uh, the new market in Kangundo Road. But uh, the way the market was designed, there was uh, where the market was built, and then there was a, an area outside that was supposed to provide access. But there was a building there that uh, I think there had been negotiations about how it could be gotten rid of. Not a county building, but a building that was owned by a private person. Um, uh, so this last sentence is the fact that because that building was standing, there was no access to uh, take that equipment into that Kangundo Road market. And Chair, as of today, that building has since been demolished. Whose so, building was that? Is that our land or private land? <coughs> it was uh, county land, but it, uh, over the years somebody had built... Uh, uh, private, uh, honorable uh, governor, you know, yeah. when you say the, the the contractor did not have the mandate to get rid of a developer, that mandate is with somebody in this room to we claim yeah. public land. Yeah, so you know, Kangundo Road Market. In the middle, there was a there was a building, what we used to call Mamauru Building, um, and there was you know back and forth in terms of her compensation. She made it political with the former president, TC. <clears throat> but uh, we finally brought down the building. Um, you know, before you do a demolition, sometimes you have to get concurrence from the regional police and whatnot, you know, the, the administration. And uh, so you'd find one side pulling back. But we made a firm decision. We've since demolished that building because she had been compensated uh, a different site. The market is very vibrant now, but it needs this, you know, weighing uh, machines because there's a component of wholesale that we're doing on that side. Okay. So that has been, uh, has been done. And so this installation should be, should be going on um, for the way bridge, because that is why we demolished the building. But, Vice Chair, you. Uh, Governor, so, so the question was, uh, I think it was under public participation uh, that this one was supposed to be Okulima market. So what happens to you are people who wanted to have this service within Ukulima Market. Since what you had procured on behalf of Ukulima Market, Ukulima Market, you are taking it into Kanguno. Number two, in who incurred uh, this private developer, was wa, wa she or he, you said he for she or she for he, uh, was he or she uh, compensated or you just demolished and that was it? And now you have access uh, to this uh, Kangunda market. And finally, my final question is, um, so on these aspects, are there that you are able to put in Ukulima market? Like so there were so many like uh, CCTV system, uh, equipment standard calibration, uh, uh, 10 electronic counter scales. Are you taking all of it to Ngangundo or some were put in Ukulima market to ensure the service uh, of your people had then gotten within the Ukulima because I would have expected that by the time it was being procured, or although you are here with us, and then by the time it was being procured, there was a, a need assessment for that Ukulima market. Thank you, Chair. Senator Methi? Uh, maybe a quick one. I don't see in the response of the county executive where the answer to this question that has been raised by the Auditor General and the works had been supervised by the NMS and but payment was done by the Nairobi City uh, County Executive and no evidence was provided to confirm that NMS had authorized the county to pay. Okay. Um, Governor, uh, very brief responses. I'd uh, I'll answer. committed to the members that would be done by 5.30. Uh, we might just extend that by five minutes max. 
Proceed, Governor. Yeah, Chair, Chair um, you know, administrative decisions can be made on where you want to use this equipment and on, on how a market is going to be activated. Um, the thinking in the county has been that to yeah, even reduce a lot of the congestion in the CBD to have these wholesale markets, more of them out, out in the outskirts. And that is why Kamundo Road Market is also going to be uh, wholesale, uh, hence the installation of that uh, way bridge. We also have Mutuni Market, which is currently ongoing at 244 million shillings in uh, the Great South. It is uh, strategically located on the bypass. Um, we have Majimazuri com coming up. Um, and the number we promised will be 20, and we are on course. Um, Chair, on the issue of um, then what happens to Wakulima, Wakulima market is actually being re relocated in its entirety. It's being, be it's being pushed further down because of the railway city plan. Um, the railway city that is coming um, right away of the railway station and Wakulima is close by there has taken that land, but the financing agreement from the British government has provided resources to build a new Wakulima market. Um, and so the new one will come with all of these uh, specifications, way bridges, cameras, etc. So what we have, it is prudent for us now to move to Kangundo Road Market so that it is used better. These decisions have to be made. You know, when you come in and find these things are in stores, what is the best use um, uh, of it? And if you find, Chair, just as a segue, the kind of things we found in stores even helped me put up the first ICU. The machines had always been there. But no one had been able to bring A and B and C together and create a solution for Nairobians. Chair, on the question of the NMS payment, that the works were supervised by NMS, but payment done by the city county executive. Um, I'll ask the, because I've not seen that uh, response, I'll ask the chief officer of finance or the CC to just respond uh, on that. Though I know there, there, there are a number of issues um, that you'll find. You see, for instance, this one, if it started in 2019, you know, that it was still, it was it started before NMS. Um, and it's an ongoing contract that has been contracted by NCCG. Some of these contracts were not innovated. There was no need of innovation to move them to NMS. So the engineers at NMS, many of whom are still county engineers, would supervise work that is still being done by the county, but the payments would be done by the, by the county, uh, by NCCG, not by NMS. You have a number of contracts like those that just started right before. Um, the NMS period, Jack. I, I think that should suffice. Um, there was one final matter that the Senator for Nairobi has brought to my attention: contract for an existing road. Uh, contract for contract for an existing road. What we want to confirm, Governor, is whether the contract that has been cited there, if it was awarded, and if payments were made. Auditor General, under contract for an existing road, can you confirm whether payments were made against the contract? You have cited contract for an existing road. Chair, there is no indication that payments were made, but contracts were entered into and signed. So contracts were uh, executed without mentioning the specific roads to be done. Exactly. It was an open check. Governor, can you confirm whether payments were made on this contract? Uh, the Chief Officer Works. This actually is a finance because it's all development. Do you have um, I'll ask for the director of World Development Program to come. This looks, these are, if you look at the reference and the contract number, that's a World Development Program uh, contract in Mlango Kubo. Just confirm whether payments were made for these non existent roads. That's what I've asked for. The, the, the director is. See the gentleman uh, joining us now. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, the payment from Langokuba has, was not done. And uh, there is evidence of uh, termination of contract? 
Maria. Was, so should in that then, um, should that have been provided to the Auditor General so that it, it stops being alarming? That's what you should have done. A letter terminating the contract. Uh, Chair, what I'm interested in more is if, if the need for roads in Laungokubwa went away. Uh, because if it didn't, then we should be seeing uh, fresh procurement because the, the, the response from the governor there is that the contractor failed to commence works and perhaps that would be the basis for termination of contract. But I'm sure the roads are still needed. So what has been done since then? There, there are still WDP projects in Langokubwa. Um, there are quite a number, I think, the engineer Kimathi. In fact, I was supposed to open one this week. That's completed. Uh, but engineer Kimathi can, uh, can give us a list of the ongoing and, and completed projects. 2019-20 uh, is, is a while back. Um, I know the current MCA. Uh, and the and the ward committees there have you know certain projects that we are undertaking, including uh, roads. Yeah, we have uh, rooms that uh, we've completed in Mlango Kubwa uh, thereafter. That even in 2022-2023, we've uh, completed uh, rooms in uh, Mlango Kubwa, and we are starting new projects in the same uh, ward. So the issue of uh, the, the the need for the room is still there. And we are continuing with that, uh, the program, the one development program. Honorable members, Nairobi is uh, a complex organization. And um, review of the Auditor General's uh, report will never be as swift as it is for the other counties. Because Nairobi has a bigger budget. During this period, there was a complication of NMS. Uh, Nairobi has got a huge on-source revenue uh, stream. And that is why at the beginning we agreed that we must, to provide closure to the two financial years, we must still have a conversation on revenue to look at the 8.9 billion that Nairobi received. And we must also have another conversation with NMS to account for the 11 billion that was transferred to the NMS. I want to propose that uh, the issues that we have not interrogated orally, we will look at the written responses for both financial years. Where the Auditor General feels that there is a very material matter that needs further clarification, we will put those issues together so that when we come back for the interrogation of the revenue statement, or when we come back for the interrogation of the 11 billion NMS transfer, then we can deal with the remnants that require uh, further clarification by the county government. If there's an issue which the Auditor General feels has been resolved, we shall mark it as such. If there's an issue which the Auditor General strongly feels is still outstanding uh, and the records before us cannot uh, change that position, then we shall uh, make a declaration as such. If that is agreeable, I would uh, just want to point out um, one other thing, Governor, your contingent liabilities are not uh, properly stated. It's 21 billion, but you have excluded litigation in progress. Your county attorney is present. No. Do, uh, the, yeah, the county uh, solicitor is uh, how many How many matters are active and live in court for and against the county government of Nairobi? Because uh, as, as I ask that, because this would be important for, uh, for our next session, I want you, Governor, to, if you're looking at the financial statements, yes. to look at the note on um, contingent liabilities. And that should be, I think it's been disclosed twice. Because I have noticed that there's some omission that might not uh, paint the right picture. So far, I think that's on page 48. Other important disclosures, page 48 of the financial statements. Um, where under contingent liabilities, you've got 21 billion, which comprises of uh, water loans, government guaranteed loans, and actuarial deficits and interests. That's 21 billion. But on court cases against the county, it is blank. 
In terms of disclosure of contingent liabilities, litigation in progress should also be disclosed. Therefore, your contingent liability, Governor, far exceeds the 21 billion uh, that has been reported. County attorney or solicitor, how many active matters do you have uh, for and against the county? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, um, as you have rightly said that actually the contingent liabilities, actually nobody changes because um, legal matters are dynamic in the sense that uh, there are those actually may have been concluded, but actually they may proceed in another matter in terms of execution. However, the active cases that actually we are having in our registry now is about 700. 700? Yes. So as far as disclosure is concerned, there needs to be some estimate because each matter there is uh, a value, there is an amount at stake. So what the finance department ought to update the the legal department ought to update the finance department is in the likely or unlikely event that uh, the case is determined, what would be the implication on the county? So court cases against the county cannot be zero. Uh, it, it, it needs to be disclosed. And sometimes it's an estimate based on the matters before court. So, Governor Sakaja, you might find that you are potential liabilities far exceed your, 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 your revenue of 29, was it 29 billion? It's a serious risk. It's a serious risk to the existence of Nairobi City County. So I just want to emphasize that that disclosure needs to be made. We've been talking of 21 billion, but that excludes litigation in progress. Now, I want to hear from the CPAs whether we have the same understanding as far as disclosure of litigation in progress is concerned. Who's the head of uh, reporting? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the 21 billion paid in this for legal. These are determined cases. The, the, uh, some of them are decreto sums at Ganeshi orders. But what we have currently on, ongoing cases, these cases are not quantified, and that's why we, we did not include them in, in that particular year. Auditor General, how do you treat litigation in progress? <clears throat> Chair, if you go to the financial statements on page 23, under significant accounting policies, they have already indicated what should go there. One of it, if I read, is a possible obligation that arises from past events and whose existence will be confirmed only by occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain future events not wholly within the control of the entity. So rightfully, if there are cases in court that might have a financial implication, they should be disclosed. Um, you, are, you are also a member of the Institute? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, because some, even on, under that note, some, some of the contingent liabilities may arise from litigation in progress. So you might be talking of 21 billion as having been determined and established, so they'll be in account payable. Yes. But what is the estimate? What is because it's more of a risk management <coughs> practice that if all these cases were to go against the county government of uh, Nairobi, will the entity continue to uh, exist? So that disclosure is important. Litigate court cases against the county cannot be zero, and I think that uh, the governor must demand. That visibility must demand uh, that uh, disclosure. It does not mean that you're going to pay, but you must make some reasonable uh, estimate so that in the event that occurs, you are able to make financial arrangements to settle that obligation. So your contingent liabilities far exceed 21 billion. And uh, Auditor General, I think you need to demand for that disclosure in subsequent uh, reporting cycles. Chair, 
I want to confirm that uh, during the verification that will be carried out before appearing in this Senate, this issue was brought to the attention of the client, and I think we're in agreement that going forward, those disclosures need to be made. Do you have any reasonable estimate of uh, what that would be? The court cases against, against the county, have you attempted uh, to quantify? That, that information we requested from legal department that, but what they provided is the listing of the 700 uh, cases without the amounts. So you must demand for that because yeah. it's required for disclosure purposes. Yes. Yeah, 700, I mean, if each case was uh, even a million, that's still a very significant amount uh, that must be found in, in the event that your legal team uh, does not do a good job of defending the county government. Yeah, on that we're in agreement with the Auditor General um, in terms of that reporting. Okay, so then let's bring uh, this conversation to a close, uh, but with Ryder that uh, there are still some things that we need to uh, query further, the ROR, the NMS, and if there's any residual matter that requires the, the, um, the confirmation by the, by the, uh, by the governor. Uh, members, any remarks in closing, or uh, we donate our time to the governor, to the senator, se senator for Nairobi? Um, yes, I Okay. <laughs> just a request, Chair. Yeah, just a quick one. Yes, uh, as much as we appreciate what Governor Zakai is doing, please, uh, Mombasa is not in very good shape. Mombasa Road. Mombasa Road is not in very good shape. Do something about Mombasa Road. That is the face of this country. That is Kenya. That is the I, Ministry I, of I, Roads and Transport. I, I, I'd like to send Chair RK to deal with that. Uh, CS Morkoman should be the one doing that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But he's busy in Finrolls and Arambe, so uh, unfortunately. Thank you. It's not the party of the governor. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> my chair, I want to say just two, two things. Governor Sakaja, I, I want to say thank you for coming for this meeting because it's been a meeting we wanted to hold. I've only one very important uh, request to make to you. You are amongst the young leaders who have been given an opportunity. The expectation is very high on you. I really wish that you do your best. I know you mean well, because I've been with you for now, I think, three days, Chair, going through different committees and listening to you. I hope that the team sitting behind you, I hope that team understands that uh, we are not joking anymore. We will hold you to account and we want Nairobi to be a very good city. Thank you, sir. Now, oh, okay, Senator Dulo. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, I must say that um, you have tried. Yeah. <laughs> I think for the last one, is it one week or the, for the last, uh, last week, we had counties appeared before us. And majority of the governors were referring the response to their chief officers and CECs. But from uh, what we are seeing today, I must say you have tried. Keep it up. It looks like you are actually on top of things. And I'm sure if you continue like that, and also holding the officers under you accountable, which is a very good thing. So keep it up. Wish you all the best, despite the challenges. Thank you. Since uh, the senator for Nairobi carries, uh, we have donated all our time to him, he might make a very lengthy speech. So I will prefer the governor to come first, closing remarks, and then uh, we wind up. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I don't think I have much uh, to add. Um, <clears throat> when I vied for the position of Governor of Nairobi, I knew what I was going for. Um, when I made the decision to vie for Senator of Nairobi, I was with you in uh, Belfast uh, or London Derry, one of the two places in Northern Ireland. And I remember I was chairing a meeting, but I chose not to chair that particular session 
and I was scribbling on a long notepad. That time we were in the same committee. You're a senator, I was a member of the National Assembly, but chair of the Cohesion Committee and Equal Opportunities. I understand my city of Nairobi. For many years, our city has been on a free fall, especially following 1992 elections, when uh, the ruling party then lost grip of the capital. And so there's been a lot of systemic decline in our city over those years, whether it is uh, in matters of land, in matters of fiduciary you know, uh, issues. And so when I took this task, I knew what I was going to face and what is ahead of me. Um, as you've seen, from 2013 to 2018, Nairobi has been getting disclaimer opinions. It's been a mess. From 2018 to 2022 has been also equally a problem. But when you're faced with such a task, what do you do? You summon the best that you can put together. Of course, you believe in God, but you must have a plan on how to sort out this city. This city will be sorted out by ourselves. And that's what I keep telling my team. It is true. Most of the staff in, this, in the county, apart from the chief officers, and, uh, and not all chief officers, some chief officers had even been there, and I promoted them. But apart from chief officers, CECs, and advisors, most of the staff have been there. Just this weekend, there was a celebration of uh, Team 89, inspected officers who joined in 1989. And uh, many years are there, some have retired, 35 years ago. To bring change, there is no instant thing you can do. It is an ideal uh, situation, but there is no magic wand that is waved to change a city like Nairobi. But I'm happy that I can be able to track progress that we've made, significant in many, many areas, whether it is in healthcare, chair in healthcare, we have, you know, things that have never been seen before. Nairobi had no ICU. Um, Kenyatta is what used to be seen as ICU. We have now more than one intensive care unit. <coughs> the lifts at Pumwani last worked when I was born, Chair. Now they are back working. Our ladies can go to theater. We've introduced the position of CEOs in our hospitals. And there's been transformation because we just had boards and medical superintendents. Medical superintendents are doctors. And so sometimes they may not look at the holistic nature of running a hospital from from the gate to the customer service, to supply chain, to the issues of human resource, to technology. Those changes are taking time, but they're being felt. In 10 years, from 2013 to the time I became governor, scholarships and bursaries in Nairobi were given worth three billion. But in less than 10 months, I was able to more than half that. We've given scholarships and bursaries 1.88 billion. People around the city who had never felt the county, they have never felt devolution. Now I'm wondering also, actually, my child can get a bursary thrice a year. It used to be given once in three years. Now it's given three times a year. Every term. 2.5 million first term, 2.5 million second term, 2 million third term. One out of four children in Nairobi were not going to school because of hunger, Chair. Most interventions to deal with hunger had been focused in the arid areas. That's why even the department in the ministry is called nomadic uh, education something, you know. We, we, we said it when we were in the Senate that we need to do a feeding program. In fact, I'm very pleased that if you look at the hansard when Senator uh, Wambu had brought the mung bill, uh, mung beans bill, I spoke about how Nairobi will be buying Ndengu from Kitui, which we are doing. Chair, in less than a year, we are able to build 10 kitchens. We are able now to feed 184,000 children every single day at five shillings. We've been able to get significant support towards that program. School enrollment has gone up from 250,000 to 310,000, just in the second phase of the school feeding program. In the third phase of that program, Chair, we're going to make sure, because we've now broken ground to another seven kitchens, we're going to make sure that all children in public schools are fed, and then the public schools become satellites to the informal schools, upbeat schools. When I say Nairobi was on a you know, free fall, there's no explanation why Nairobi has 210 public primary schools, yet we have 17 constituencies, 85 wards. If you look at maybe some of your constituencies in your counties, one constituency might have 100. But how do we sort out that challenge? 
Do we say let us not feed these ones because we can't feed everyone? Today we've increased that enrollment. We are now building 5,000 classrooms. The national government uh, committed and they put 1 billion uh, for classrooms. We have put 500 million and every year 1,500 classrooms. Meaning by the end of this first term, we'll possibly have left more classrooms than I found when I became governor of Nairobi. So Chair, the, the, the challenges are numerous. This is a city whose last master plan was done in 1976. The last physical master plan of the city following the 1948 master plan. We have now gotten resources to do the next master plan of the city through the Millennium Challenge Corporation. And that's why in two weeks we're going to be you know, accompanying the national government to the US. NMS tried, made an attempt to do those master plans. You know, of, you know, new plan is a foundation for planning, but that was not done. We have $60 million now just to do that proper master planning for our city in 12 months. And after that, we secured 700 to 800 million dollars to implement it. A city that had not been planned looking forward, of course, would have the challenges that we see today, that there's no water. People are wondering, Chairman, why is it that the dams are full of water, but the water rationing is going on? And when you try to explain that, very few then understand that, first of all, all the water that we receive in Nairobi must be treated through a treatment plant. In fact, because of the rain in Gatere Forest and the debris in the Chania River, our production capacity at Ngedu has moved down from 18,700 cubic meters per hour to 17,400. And that's why we're able to get NOS to go and clear, you know, help us clear that. Because of that lack of planning, Chair, as, as I go to conclude, I know I've taken time, Nairobi had only four sources of this water that we talk about. Three of them done by the colonialists. Kikuyu Springs, done in 1904 to 1910, 6,000 cubic meters to the city. Ruiru Dam, done in 1928. Sasumo, done in 1958, 60 uh, million liters per day. Those three were done before we got independence. When we got independence, the only project that had been done was Northern Collector, uh, sorry, was Ndakaine, done between 1994 and 1997, producing 84 percent of our water. But it was done with a view of a population of the year 2002 which was 2 million Nairobians. So every day we get 525.6 million liters against a demand now that has gone to 900 million liters a day. What have you been able to do within this one year and uh, how many months? One, almost one and a half uh, or just slightly above. Maybe 20 months to be exact. We've unlocked the first project that was being done after that period of Northern Collector 1 to add 140 million liters to bridge that gap of water. We have secured and that process is now ongoing. Uh, support to do Northern Collector 2 and Maragua 4, which adds 220 million liters of water. But the next 1 million liters of water also must be looked at. Our engineers, for instance, at Nairobi Water have designed one of the programs at Nyevu, where we lose 30 million liters of water every day because of the filtration system. Just at 2 billion is now going to bring back that 30 million liters, half of Senator Medu's uh, Sasumwa in his, in his county. Just at 2 billion shillings back into the grid. The future will not plan itself, Chair. The challenges are there for the city, but the opportunities are there for us. We hope that, Chair, um, even to engage the Senate, uh, my Senator, our members of Parliament, resident associations, there are so many stakeholders, that this year, with our vision 2050, we can then now look at Nairobi. By the year 2050, with a population of 10.5 million people, what needs to be done today moving that way? So Nairobi is a peculiar city. As you said, I saw a report saying that uh, our revenue is that of 30 counties combined. The GDP of Nairobi is $28 billion. Rwanda as a country is $11 billion. Uh, Burundi as a country is $2 billion. We're engaging uh, uh, financiers out there saying, look, you can support Nairobi directly. We want to come to you, and I gave a presentation to the Devolution Committee. We want to come to you on how you can enable us as a county move beyond the limitations of municipal financing that this city needs. Unless we get significant financing, it has been raining, people are talking about drainage, to expand the drainage to the extent that we'd want is billions of shillings. So unless we can be able to discount our future income, we know for sure we'll never get less than 20 billion a year, whether or not we collect on source revenue. And I've told it is going up. Unless we can be able to do that, we've gotten transaction advisors. We'll need the Senate to support us in that process. So, Chair, there are many things that I can talk about, but let me not talk about it. But just to underscore, I've been a Senator longer than I've been a Governor. I've been a legislator. 
Leadership needs bold decisions to be made. You find a situation, you look at it, you address it. While addressing it also, you must make sure you create political stability um, you know, for you to be able to implement it. Unlike NMS, what, whatever was there, one, uh, we are not military, we have to work with the people. Uh, then, you know, whatever entity was there was not a threat politically to anyone. No one was trying to pull it down. But now that where we are, and I'm very happy that uh, despite a lot of misinformation that has been out there, the Senate, and particularly your committee, has been objective enough to look at the issues. I want to conclude by saying that I'm very happy that this notion or idea that the county government of Nairobi, or the government of Nairobi, um, does not want to be held accountable. I hope that that is debunked. Chair, I've come to the Senate more than any other governor. This is today is possibly my 13th appearance in this financial year, you know, to different and various committees. Um, out of 15 invites, in fact, for you, you said one invite, you know, that was missed, or two. We, we are ready for accountability. Being accountable, and I keep telling you, audit is a, is a tool to help the county. But I want my officers to know that no one will protect you again. Everybody must answer for themselves. Everybody must hold, you know, must, must be able to answer for the actions they take, no matter who is your boss. And that is why everybody signs a performance agreement, I have performance contracts with my CECs. They have in turn signed performance contract with the chief officers up until director um, level. So I want to thank you for your cooperation. The Senate really can support Nairobi County in many counties. You know, if governors understand what the true essence of Senate is, I think we can actually make um, our counties work and we can make Nairobi work. So thank you for your patience. We've taken a whole day. But uh, just to let you know that I'm available to come. And in fact, I was, I was telling the Committee of Devolution, I will also proactively invite uh, the committees and even this committee to look at specific issues in order to help us be better at serving Monenji. Our citizens sometimes are not very patient um, in terms of what they want everything now. But we must also as political leaders carry them along and let them know this is what we are doing, this is the progress we are making. We are not there. And sometimes we may falter. But we have moved from point A to point B and we are moving to point C. That is the essence of leadership. Chair. So I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Governor. Senator Sifunu. Thank you, Chair. Because my colleagues were generous enough to donate their time. Governor, sometimes you read the room. These guys have been here from morning. And it is not always necessary to put out uh, your view of your achievements at every point. Uh, I can assure you, when Nairobi works, you will, it will not come from you. You will be hearing it from the people of Nairobi that uh, in Mbakasi South, it is working. In uh, North, it is working. In Dagorete, it is working. So personally, I would encourage you that uh, uh, some of these issues that you raise, uh, you know we have differences of opinion as to how well they are working. But I think it is within your right uh, to, uh, can I use the word trumpet, or I will be ruled out of order, mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that you are doing in order for the city to work. But when this city works, Governor, you will never have to say it, I can assure you because you will be hearing it from the people themselves. So I want to thank the members of the committee for their patience, because as the chair has said, uh, we have a very, very unique county here in Nairobi, and some of the stories that have emerged, uh, you can see uh, from, from, from the discussion that they are very unique, they don't happen anywhere else. And Governor, I think our responsibility as leadership is to paint the correct picture of the state of affairs yes. of the county of Nairobi so that we can be helped. When I'm trying to convince my colleagues here, and uh, I'm happy that this year we were in consonance, uh, to vote for higher resources to go to the counties, uh, they should be in the picture of some of these challenges that we're going through. Uh, if I am trying to convince a, a senator from Lamu that we are not the same, that uh, you know our electricity bill alone is, a, is, is equivalent to his equitable share, uh, then it helps when we paint this picture for everyone, for us to know the sort of situation we are in. Some of the discussions here, and you yourself have uh, admitted, there is just some embarrassing things that go on in our county that no one can be proud of. If you buy a machine that you know very well ha ha cannot fit in, the, in any of the premises you have, how do you explain that? So it is important for us to bring out the, the challenges we are facing as a county so that we can actually be helped. And specifically for this uh, committee, Governor, this committee has been extremely helpful to you and your county government. Uh, from the decision of NMS on pending bills, that happened before this committee. Uh, the question of uh, 
uh, upbeat schools is happening in the conversation is happening in the Senate. Me and uh, you, the MP for Madare are sponsoring an amendment to the Education Act to recognize those schools so that you don't have an excuse as to why you are not feeding the kids in those schools. The question of Mama Margaret Kenyatta Hospital was resolved in our Energy uh, Senate Health Committee, uh, chaired by Senator Mandago. Uh, and of course, the passage of the extra resources for this county. So, uh, my encouragement is that you, you need to paint the actual picture. In Nairobi, nobody is going to be patient with you. It doesn't matter how many times you repeat that it's only been one and a half years. This is one of those counties that you build the boat as you sail. Because nobody is going to wait for you. At the end of the day, uh, somebody who requires those services, the roads, the, the medicine, the health care, is not going to sit back and say, oh, by the way, our governor is still dealing with the uh, NMS problems. We must work on these prog uh, problems progressively as we move on. So for me, really, I don't want to speak further than that. Uh, we just hope that finally we will unlock the formula to uh, make sure that this city works. I thank you, Chair. Uh, just to conclude it is to thank my members for their resilience and even the media for uh, staying with us for this long. This has been one of the longest uh, meetings. Uh, Governor, when I look at the functions and powers of county governments in the fourth schedule... Excuse me, Chair. Please don't forget to remind the Governor that he has not paid money for flock. Yes, yes, yes. I was going to come to that. When you look at uh, functions and powers of county governments, all those functions from number one to number 14, Nairobi County has got something to do with it, has got a function, has got a service to deliver. Unlike uh, some counties, you know, there are some counties without cinemas, without libraries, without museums, without parks and recreation facilities. And uh, Nairobi has to offer services from agriculture to liquor, all the way to, I think it goes all the way to control of drugs and pornography. That is not a problem in some counties, but it is a problem and a demand in Nairobi City. And therefore, I feel, having sat in the Senate for this long, that we must agree on a financing and governance framework for cities that is distinct from the financing and governance framework for the rest of the counties. And uh, it is not just about uh, an NMS structure or talking about who the CEO of Nairobi should be, whether a politician or a bureaucrat, but Nairobi needs unique and distinct financing. And the division of revenue cannot deliver the resources that Nairobi needs for it to be a modern and world-class city hosting a United Nations headquarter. Governor, let's work together so that when you come before the Senate, we are not talking about retreats at unknown locations or contracts on unknown roads or uh, weights and measures that should have been implemented a long time ago. I hope that we should be able to talk about green bonds. We should be able to talk about infrastructure bonds. Counties like Laikipia have been bold enough to bring a proposal to the Senate for approval for infrastructure bonds. We should be able to talk about climate financing and how you can use that. The illustration you gave of foot bridges that have to be constructed to allow children to move from one part of the city to the other to attend school qualifies for climate finance because those infrastructure improvements as, are as a result of climatic conditions and actions. That would be put in the books of accounts as climate finance. So there's a lot of money, but if you are still counting uh, pennies and cents, and if you are still talking about voided transactions and lack of reconciliation, I would really like the Senate to engage with the governor of Nairobi on bigger things, bigger ideas to unlock financing, and bigger ideas to ensure that the people who live in Nairobi find it to be a hospitable and beautiful place. I came to Nairobi many, many years when the Kenya bus was working, when Kanjo schools were operating, when health centers were operating, and there were even Kanjo estates. What is it that our forefathers could do that we cannot do today? And we are better educated, and we should be richer now. It should worry us that in the past, the Kanjo of the past 
would even run primary schools and secondary schools. And for us now with ECDs, we are struggling. So members, I think having resolved that we shall have a different conversation on ROR and the NMS, we had also resolved that we need to visit a few projects within Nairobi City County. It is not enough for the governor to walk over to the Senate. I think to do project visits in Nairobi, we don't need a budget. We just get into our vehicles and we go and check out some of these water projects that the governor is talking about. That will enhance our understanding of the challenges and enable us to provide solutions. I want to thank everyone, all the stakeholders, and um, Clark, we shall schedule, we shall agree on the next date for the appearance on ROR and the other issues. The meeting is therefore adjourned. We had a meeting scheduled for tomorrow. I think we have received a letter seeking for postponement. We shall deal with it accordingly. So the meeting is adjourned till Thursday, 9.30. Thank you.